Hello in the news today. 16 people have been injured in a collision between a school bus and a logging truck in the small bay of Plenty Town of Ruatoki. St John Ambulance Northern Communications team manager Glenn Taylor says three people are in a serious condition and have been flown to Rotorua and Tauranga hospitals. Others have been taken to Whakatani Hospital. Daniel Rockhouse has spoken of the moment he found the other Pike River survivor, Russell Smith. He is giving evidence at the second phase of the Royal Inquiry into the explosion at the mine which killed 29 men. Mr Rockhouse says after the explosion he passed out and when he woke up he managed to get air from a compressor before attempting to walk out. He says when he and Mr Smith made it to a fresh air base none of the equipment was working. A coroner's inquest into the death of fireman Derek Lovell at a Waikato cool store fire has been told a build-up of gas contributed to the explosion that killed him. Seven other firefighters were seriously injured in the incident at the ice pack cool store in Tamaheri. Department of Labour Chief Inspector Keith Stewart has told the inquest a gas leak occurred four hours prior to the explosion, but it wasn't picked up by the gas detection system. A former race relations conciliator has condemned Professor Margaret Mutu's comments on white immigration. The Māori Studies expert says we should restrict the number of white people coming into the country because they bring racist attitudes with them. Gregory Fortain says that kind of attitude is the opposite of what New Zealanders marched for during the 1981 Springbok tour. There's been huge support for the Tongan team upon their arrival in New Zealand for the Rugby World Cup today. The 4,000 fans and their red and white flags who turned out at Auckland International Airport then moved on to Greenwood's Corner to continue celebrations. Police were forced to close the roads at the intersection of Pa and Manukau roads because of the congestion. The government uh, says legislation reforming alcohol laws won't be passed before the election. Prime Minister John Keyes confirmed that today. He says the alcohol reform bill will go through its second reading, but he doesn't think it will make it to its committee stage because of the amount of work that the government has on its order paper. Nearly 10,000 homeowners in Christchurch's Port Hills have been given the green light to begin repairing their properties. Cabinet met in Christchurch today with ministers approving the property's change of status, taking them out of the more dangerous white zone. Earthquake Recovery Minister Jerry Brownlee says 3,700 Port Hills properties remain in the white zone awaiting further investigation. He says that process will continue as steadily as it possibly can. Jean Hubbard is to remain in statutory management for another week despite the death of her husband. Alan Hubbard died in a head-on collision with a ute near Omaru on Friday. The 83-year-old was due in court next month on 50 charges following an investigation by the Serious Fraud Office. Meanwhile, the support Alan Hubbard group has released details of a report which claims the investigation into the Hubbards was flawed. Noel McPherson told New Zealand's Rima that Kerry Grass's report reveals a number of serious issues with procedures. And that's all from us in the Shine Newsroom. Don't forget we've bulletins through the evening every hour on the half hour. And you can always check out our radio news bulletins at the top of each hour on New Zealand's Rima and Southern Star. But from us, for now, Kakiti Anu.